The President of the United States invited them over to the White House. They wound up having dinner. They talked about tax reform, immigration, infrastructure, trade, and health care. The President's up and he is tweeting, no deal was made last night on DACA. Massive border security would have to be agreed to in exchange for consent. President Trump and the First Lady are expected to land here in Fort Myers. They will be meeting with first responders as well as those who have lost just about everything to Irma. Bernie Sanders is introducing a bill to establish a single-payer health care system. I equate it to like watching Oprah Winfrey. She's like, you get a house, you get a house. The difference is she can pay for it. And the United States government cannot afford it. Outrage boiling over in a Maryland sanctuary city that just gave illegal immigrants the right to vote. And it was painful to listen to some of the really irrational arguments that were made. This idea of fake news. The press corps wants to attack Republicans, attack conservatives, undermine um, our, our attempt to have a constructive dialogue. And I think it's a two-way street. Anyway, uh, they're coming up, uh, and we've also got Sarah Huckabee Sanders. We got the sheriff. We've got you. Right? And we have tonight. the tweets from the president. Yep. At He's the top busy. of the hour, if you're just waking up, the president last night had dinner with Nancy and Chuck. You know, the minority leaders of the House and Senate, and he calls them Nancy and Chuck. So we kind of found humor in that. But anyway, he sat down with them at the White House last night, and they had Chinese food, and they talked about they talked about a lot of things. They talked about tax reform, immigration, infrastructure, trade, and health care. Right. And Nancy tweeted last night that she made a deal with him on. DACA. Right, but there was no wall included. Well, the President of the United States wanted to make sure everybody understood that perhaps not accurate, and in fact, he tweeted this out this morning. No deal was made last night on DACA. Massive border security would have to be agreed to in exchange for consent would be subject to vote. The wall, which is already under construction in the form of new renovation of old and existing fences and walls will continue to be built. Continue to be built. That means the wall is being built right now, according to the Absolutely. president. Absolutely. And there's different places where there's a wall and there's different places where a fence needs to be tripled or repaired or extended. And that's that's what they're really getting down to. And the president's been down at least three separate times to examine different portions of the wall. So it's going forward. But I'm just amazed at how things have changed in the last two weeks. What? Since the yeah. president came back, uh, he actually he was never really away. They were just working on the West Wing. But since the president was back in Washington and Congress returned, nothing is the same. The president's moving more in a way in which he ran his company. He's bringing people together. When you do a deal, it doesn't necessarily have to be, I win, you lose. And that's what the president uh, has always been about. And this way he's saying, yeah, Republicans are in power. They're not able to deliver. And the fact that the Democrats Democrats aren't playing in at all does not play to our best interest as a country. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely because I think that Harvey is helping him too because that looks great that he's going down there. He's passing this tax relief bill, giving those folks the help that they need. And guess how he did it? He had to go to the Democrats. So it looks good mm -hmm. that they're working together sure. as a team. It makes the Republicans in Congress look really bad, however. Well, and it's it was a Republican plan to begin with. Remember uh, when the president became president, he had as his chief of staff Reince Priebus. Reince was there essentially to get stuff done in Congress. Not Nothing got done in Congress, but the credo inside the West Wing was we don't need the Democrats to do anything. We're just going to do it with only Republican votes. Well, that didn't work on the Affordable Care Act and other things. And so the president essentially has said, if I can't get deals done with the Republicans, I'm going to reach across the aisle and see if I can pull in some Democrats as well. And then when he made the determination that they were going to do something about the Dreamers and have Congress do it, that's when he started to deal in the Democrats. And in fact, he looks very sympathetic to the Dreamers this morning in another series of tweets. Yeah, he says, does anybody really want to throw out good, educated, and accomplished young people who have jobs, some serving in the military? Really? They have been in our country for many years through no fault of their own, brought in by parents at a young age, plus big border security. And right, and to do that isolated wouldn't make much sense. To do it comprehensively, where we almost had a deal uh, of three or four times over the last 15 years, I think makes a lot of sense. And I think there's a sense that uh, things could get done in Congress. What I also think is important, too, is when Chuck Schumer, evidently, and Nancy Pelosi told their constituents the Democrats don't deal with this president, let's just wait it out, make them look bad, that wasn't working for them. 
So now by them having dinner with the president twice in two weeks, they are freeing up all those people who were scared that the powers that be were going to force them fundraising wise or primary them not to deal with the president. Now they're dealing with the president. That frees up people to start uh, trying to get things done. However, I want to know Steve Mnuchin in him talking, who's the Treasury Secretary, and talking to Brett yesterday, says, I want to get Democrats involved. But if not, we could also do the 51 vote simple majority. We're not giving up the one party uh, 50, uh, 51, 52 votes. We are giving Democrats an opportunity to do what Joe Manchin said. Right. Get 30 and 30. Get all buy-in. Right. This way, if you bought in, and then you have more of an incentive to make it work rather than blow it up and run against it. And they can do legislation through the reconciliation toward the end, till the end of this month, and then they've got to have the 60 votes. Uh, a top presidential aide told the New York times that the president has always been open to passing DACA without the wall. It is not moved. They have not moved from the wall as a priority. And just to prove that with the 11 people around the table last night, who made the case for the wall? It was the chief of staff, John F. Kelly. Why wouldn't the Democrats want the wall, Steve? Why wouldn't? Because it's keeping the illegal drugs, illegals out of the country. I mean, the people who are climbing that wall, the majority of them are doing things they're bringing drugs mm -hmm. into the country, Ainsley, correct? Ainsley, it's insincerity. I know there are times you don't need the wall. You have a river or there's some, there's some environmental issue that's legitimate. But they were on the same page to build 700 miles of wall, and they even had the money for it. It is because the president ran on it, and they don't want to see him get a victory. But the president is making them play. He keeps rolling the ball back and saying, I'm not going to let you sit on the sidelines and yell. I'm putting you in the game. So get busy and be productive, because you're not going to just sit there and say, this president President doesn't want to deal with me anymore because he clearly is. Remember what he did for lunch yesterday? He was with the problem solvers. He had a bunch of Democrats right. over in the uh, in the House, and he wanted to hear. He listens. He wants to hear what they want in tax reform. Well, if some of the people who are crossing the border are doing it with ill intentions to bring illegal drugs mm -hmm. into our country, I just don't understand why they wouldn't want the wall sure. to be placed up. You know, if 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 you want to come in the country and you and you want to bring education, you want you want to be a normal person or right. a a good person and come to the U.S., then do it the right way. Sure, but the Democrats' point of view is they would like a clean bill regarding DACA, and the Republicans would like increased border security. And the Democrats say, we can keep the border secure with a lot more money, and you look at the fact that over the first six months, something like 70% of the illegal border crossings went uh, stopped. But here's the problem for the president. It's not just the Democrats who don't want the wall. There are a lot of really powerful Republicans who are not making a priority. I don't think uh, Paul Ryan really wants to build the wall. I don't think Mitch McConnell really wants to build the wall. But the president has got a core of the people who got him elected who said, look, he promised the wall, and we think we need the wall. Could you do it through increased border security? Probably, but you know, a lot of people look at it as a promise is a promise. Because Reagan passed uh, comprehensive immigration reform and was promised border security. He gave them amnesty and he never got the border security. Yeah. So we want to make sure if, as a country, not a party, as a country, that we get it right this time. I'm going to add one other thing to the DACA conversation because it's been brought up to me. Since I play soccer, a lot of people from other countries play soccer, and I get a chance to people who do the paperwork right Right? pay a lot of money in fees and wait patiently in a very broken system to get uh, immigration papers and be able to vote and be an American citizen, they are not sympathetic to the DACA kids. Right. For the most part, they're like, I'm doing it right. It's taken forever. And these guys were brought here by their parents illegally. Why do I have to get behind them in line? Well, it's just a situation. It's the plate we've got right now. There are 11 million people who are in the country illegally. What do you do with them? Do you send them all back? Uh, they never officially signed the guest book when they came in. Somebody's got to figure out how to do it, you and that's why the president would like. But you have to be sympathetic to them. They were brought here at like two years old. They, and where, what country more, are they going to go back to? But the to? argument is, who's ties. more important? The people that did it the right way, or the people that did it the wrong way? Of course, the people who did it the right way, but these kids, their their parents made the choices, not right. them. Look, a bunch of laws were broken, but we've got the system that needs fixing, and ultimately that's what the president right. of the United States would like to do, come to a solution. President Barack Obama had a chance when he had a supermajority to do something about a comprehensive immigration reform when they controlled, the Democrats did the, uh, the uh, Senate and the House, and they cho chose not to. Fast forward, here we are today. Now what do we do? He won for health care instead. He did? Uh, Ten minutes after the hour. Here we are.
All right, here's some more headlines this morning, starting with Fox News Alert. 15 Marines are hurt, eight of them in a burn unit following a training exercise at Camp Pendleton. Their amphibious assault vehicle caught on fire on a... Beach near San Diego, and at this hour, six Marines remain in critical condition. And training turns. deadly at Fort Hood in Texas. A soldier killed as a Black Hawk helicopter crew practiced medical evacuations. The soldier's identity is still unknown. Moments ago, President Trump tweeting, and leaving now for Florida to see our great first responders and to thank the U.S. Coast Guard, FEMA, etc. A real disaster, much work to do. Vice President Pence and the First Lady will join the President to meet with victims of Hurricane Irma. Irma knocked out power across that state, including at this nursing home. We listen to this, at least eight people died because of the blazing heat. They didn't have air conditioning. The facility in Hollywood, Florida now under criminal investigations. Brand new disturbing details about a string of bizarre health attacks on U.S. diplomats in Cuba. The AP reporting that some Americans are waking up in the middle of the night hearing loud grinding or high-pitched noises like a sonic boom confined, confined only to their hotel rooms. Some victims now have problems concentrating or recalling specific words. Their spouses were also affected. Racism is as American as baseball. Those are the words on that banner right there, displayed by several protesters on the outfield on the wall during last night's Red Sox game. Those fans were escorted out to the booze of surrounding fans. The group says they were inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement, and they wanted to remind everyone that racism, like baseball, is fundamental to American culture and history. Right. Uh, the Black Lives Matter also uh, uh, put a tarp over the Jefferson statue at the University of Virginia, a statue we found it. So uh, they're on a roll. Mm -hmm. I wonder, they do have pretty good security at that particular stadium. I wonder how they got something that big right. in. Right, right. I'm not sure. Just asking. Uh, yeah, they usually pat you down. Uh, Twelve minutes now after the hour. It's a growing trend in cities across America, letting illegal immigrants vote. Filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza has a few things to say about that in his brand new book now. Now to the state of Maryland where an important question is being asked. Can you vote if you're not an American citizen? Well, in the city of College Park, the answer is now yes. This week, the city council there voted in favor of allowing undocumented citizens to the right to vote in local elections. And it turns out it's not even the first city in that state to allow it here to weigh in. It's conservative filmmaker and author of The Big Lie, Dinesh D'Souza. Dinesh, good morning to you. Good morning. All right, uh, this is not unique to College Park because there are a number of localities in Maryland that have already voted to do this. What do you think? Well, to me, it makes no sense because of what citizenship actually means. Uh, citizenship is a, a kind of bargain among citizens of a country. Uh, it comes out of a social compact with certain rights and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, for example, you know, why would I fight for my country and die for you if you wouldn't be willing to do the same for me? So sure. this is a very reciprocal deal. And the whole idea of letting non-citizens vote and shape the governmental process, that falls outside the social compact. Sure, but uh, Dinesh, you know the argument they make is, look, these people are in the country illegally, but they're paying taxes, they're impacted by the schools and emergency services, they should have a say in it. Well, th I don't think they should, because being non-citizens, they need to go through the citizenship path, become citizens, then they get the protections of being a citizen, and they also get the benefits of being a citizen. And essentially what they're claiming is, and you can see why the Democrats want this, the Democrats' interest in these people is their votes. And so the Democrats are more keen to to get their votes than they are to get to send them to school or do any other things for them. That's the main political problem. There's a divergence between the interests of a political party and the fundamental meaning of citizenship. Absolutely. Ultimately, though, if that's what the people want and the town council to vote on it, I guess that's what they get. I, I got to ask you about the news of the day, and that is there was this big dinner last night at the White House. It sounds like they have agreed to go forward to work on a deal toward DACA, and the president says it has to include uh, increased security for our nation's border, uh, but there may not be a wall involved in the funding in this particular thing. What do you think about that? 
I think that at the end of the day, Trump may be moving to a position in which he says that the wall is symbolic. In other words, that these are the five ways we're going to be enforcing immigration. Uh, these are the ways we're going to be securing our border. So I don't need the wall to keep us safe. Exactly. I have an electronic wall. I have 10 different ways to check identities. I have all kinds of enforcement within the country. It may be that there's a way to work this out that doesn't, uh, doesn't require a wall. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with that. Because there are a lot of people who voted for him thinking, okay, we're going to finally have the wall. Well, I think what people voted for is this. They voted for a principle. And the principle is we can't fix domestic immigration policy without stopping the, a porous border in which, in a sense, people keep streaming across. Trump has got to demonstrate that he's willing to be firm on that. All right. Uh, his new book is called The Big Lie. Dinesh D'Souza, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. He makes his home down in Houston, and you did not have damage, right? Happily not. All right. Uh, thank you, Dinesh. Thank you. Meanwhile, they have broken some of the biggest celebrity stories. Now, the New York Post page six is coming to a TV near you. The Hollywood insiders breaking those stories have a breaking baby story. What is it? Find out next. All right, time now for your news by the numbers. First, 50%. That's how many millennials would give up their right to vote in the next two elections to get their student loan debt erased. That, according to a survey by the personal finance website, Credible. Next, number one, how to tie a tie is the most popular how-to question that people search on Google. Wow. The company says searches that start with how-to have risen 140% since 2004. That's because we don't talk to each other and ask advice or directions anymore. And 200000 bucks. that's how much state taxpayer money a former Arkansas state employee just admitted to embezzling. She used the money to buy personal items, including a tuxedo. Just just like this one for the pup for her pug at least she admitted it now for something totally different and you can talk here's Ainsley all right thank you Brian well it is the most iconic gossip column in the nation and now the New York Post page six is coming to a TV near you Welcome to page six TV from the heart New York, the city so nice, they charge you twice when you pay for rent anywhere else. We've got an amazing cast of contributors, all with their own unique inside info on the latest, hottest, breaking celebrity news. Page Six TV launches on Monday, and joining me now, the Page Six TV contributors, Bevy Smith, who's sitting next to me, Carlos Greer in the middle, and Elizabeth Wagmeister. Thank you so much for being being here for us this morning. Carlos, where was your face? I saw the two of you, Carlos, I left you out. So y'all are contributors, what will you be doing? You'll be going and gathering the stories? Yeah, well, uh, these fabulous guys are actual real journalists, so Carlos yeah. is on Page Six. Yes, I'm senior reporter for the column. I work for Variety, so I'm a reporter for Variety, and I was based in Los Angeles and moved out here. So like Bevy said, we are journalists. We have real sources, real stories that we're mm -hmm. bringing to this show. We're not just reading the headlines. We're really taking a deeper dive. And Miss Bevy over here <laughs> knows everybody, but more importantly, everybody knows her. So she's bringing some good good stuff to this show. Yeah, I, I'm, the, I'm the queen of the scene, as they call me. <laughs> and I get to, the chance to really kind of dive deep yeah. and give you a little more um inside the information and set the scene. Okay, well, when we were talking in the break room or in the green room, Steve and Brian were on air and they were teasing the story about the baby. What's the baby yes. news you're breaking on in page six? Oh, just the lovely... Oh, uh, uh, well, Serena Williams. Williams. Yeah, she just had a baby and she debuted her baby in the hospital. There were some complications, but, you know, she's obviously extremely ecstatic about her new daughter and she revealed uh, the photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. So that's one of the topics or the type of topics you'll be talking mm -hmm. about yeah. on the yeah. show. And then also, um, Anthony, Anthony Weiner and and his wife Uma, they've been all over the press. They're on headlines, all of you know, because they're yeah. in divorce court right yes. now. Yes, yeah, and it's seen, it seemingly very friendly divorce court yeah. proceedings. <laughs> Smiling, mm -hmm. not exactly canoodling, which is my <laughs> favorite word to pay six, but definitely <laughs> yeah. a lot of like well, close talking and all of that. Yeah, and they're, they're whispering, yes, too. Yeah, they're asking for it to be everything to be private. They don't want all their yeah. mess, their dirty laundry aired because they have a child. To and because they've already had so much of it aired. I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. And, you know, we've covered this extensively uh obviously and what was interesting about it when they were in court they were sitting there whispering and they seemed like they were kind of re and reconciling very, really the mm -hmm. judge even yeah. told them that this is the best thing for their child yeah. 